This is George Pearson and this is a Photoshop Elements video. If you enjoy this video, make sure that you subscribe and also click the like button as well. If you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, take a look at the links in the description for my full training courses available on Amazon and my website. This Adobe Color Wheel is something which was brought to my attention by Rich, also known as Mr. MoonPy001, and we'll see how we can use this with Photoshop Elements. This online version of the Adobe Color Wheel, as you can see up here, is designed for working with their Creative Cloud programs, specifically the Photoshop and Illustrator Creative Cloud programs, but it'll work with any of the CC programs. But you also can access this without having one of those programs. In other words, you can use this with Photoshop Elements as well. Now, the way this program works is that we have different ways of looking at a color wheel and different ways of choosing specific colors off of the color wheel. These colors are displayed down here across the bottom right there. If I scroll down a little bit, you see that we have information, more information about the color right down in here. Click on each one of these and you get more information about that particular color. There we go. So easy to use so far. Now this is divided up into several different ways of looking at color. Analogous, these are all colors that are closely related as you can see right there. Monochromatic, they're all one color, just different variations on that one color. Triad, they're separated by thirds. The whole circle is divided up into thirds and their colors out there on the one third. Complementary, they're straight across from each other. Just different theories. Compound, a little bit more complex as you can see in here. And shades has one color and we're bringing black into those, creating shades. And then custom, you can do anything you want to, of course, on custom. Let's see how this whole process works. So use the top one here, the analogous. Two ways to use this grab the middle control with that little arrow on there. You can slide that around and notice as I slide this around you get different colors across the bottom down here just like that. So you can actually find colors that work well together. Now this isn't a guarantee that these will all be perfect matches. A lot of these color matches just are not very good but there's a good chance that these will be colors that will work out well for you. Also some of these colors will work great on monitors and will not work very well if you print them out. Like these real bright fuchsias. Really hard to print that particular color. If I move over here to our bright greens, almost impossible to print that color using standard printing inks. If this was being printed, if I wanted to print this page and have this match exactly, I go to a professional printer and they use a separate ink matched to that color and a separate ink run to actually print that part of it. So you can print it, but most personal printers and office printers will not be able to handle that particular color. So just keep those things in mind. Those really bright colors are hard to print. Also, if you look at the color wheel in here, notice how it's white in the middle and it's full saturation on the outsides here. So outside is full color. And as you go in towards the middle, you are mixing in white into your color. This is what's called a tint. So as you add in white, you're creating a tint. If I scroll down just a little bit, right down here, we have our basic colors. You can see here, here's the color. And we're looking at this as an RGB color right there, RGB. So we have three slider controls for the RGB values of this. At the bottom is your hexadecimal number for that. But then right here, here's a slider control that is adding in black. So you can slide this in and bring in black in your images. So there are two ways of working with or adjusting colors. One is to add in white and you're making a tint. Other one is to add in black and you're making a shade. So you have those two different options. So you want to add black, it's done down here. If you want to add white, it's done up here. And you can add white by describing one of these circles and pulling it in. I'm actually bringing more white in. See it right over here. I'm making a tint of this color by bringing it in away from the edge. Now as far as printing goes, your colors right along the edge out here are also very hard to print. If you come in a little ways, the colors become easier to print. So you're better off having your colors in just a little bit or a little bit of black in them. If you're working for web images, this doesn't matter at all. And of course, it will depend upon the quality of paper you're using. Photo paper, photo print paper is better than nice high glossy photo print paper. Much better at printing colors than 
matte or your flat papers. So the higher quality of the paper, the better the print's going to come out. Let's see how we can now do some choices in here and use this to create color palettes. The range of our colors here, from this side to this side, you can control that, grab either of these ends, I'll grab this one this time, pull that out, and notice how it spreads out the color range. You can then grab the middle one and just kind of rotate things around. What you want to do is watch the bottom section here, watch the color chart, until you find a set of colors that you like. Now some spots, if I just go over here just a little bit, you'll find some spots, like right here, they're getting pretty close. Not an exact match, but it's getting pretty close. But you may find somewhere they're almost identical. Like right in, kind of edge it back up, right around here. There we go, that's pretty close. These are very, very close in value, and this would not be a good color match. You want to have more of a difference between your colors. I would move that around to have more of an obvious difference between your colors. There's just one way to look at this. Okay, so this is working then with these analogous colors. Once you find a color range that you like, you can then modify. Look, this is a little bit too bright. I could modify that by clicking over here and bringing in a little bit of black into it, darken it down, or bringing a little bit of white into it, just like that, just kind of toning down the amount of color in there. So you can fine-tune your colors that way. Okay, so that's the analogous. Let's look at our monochromatic. They're all based on the same color. As I swing this around, you'll see the colors change down there. They're still all based on the same color. Just choose the color range you want and swing it around to get a nice a nice set of colors. Notice that right in here again, these are getting very similar. So that's not a very good choice. You want to be somewhere where you have a bit more of a separation. Like right down here, we're seeing some separation now in our color. Actually, this one and this one are pretty close. A bit more black in that than we have over here. They're pretty close. Same thing here. You can grab this inner control, actually slide that in, and put more white into some of your colors. Or if you want more black, just come down here. And you can add more black in to your colors. Notice that this is controlling all the main colors. They're kind of working together because it is working as a set. Okay, the triad. They're straight across from each other. Notice they have overlapping ones here and overlapping ones here. Here's your control. Just pull this one around. And again, the idea here is you want to find a set of colors that looks nice together down below here and where you see a nice distinct difference between all of your colors. Now in here, these are very, very similar already because they are overlapping. So just click on the bottom one, kind of separate those out. It'll give you more of a separation between the colors. You can do the same thing up here. You can get a little more separation between your colors. Very nice color range. Okay, complementary, straight across from each other. Same thing. Notice how we have two in this range and there are three up in that range. You can see that right down here. And just move around until you find some colors that go well together. Like, like those go pretty well together in here. That's kind of a standard color look. Compound, a little more complex as you can see here. Just swing this around until you find some colors that work out well, that look pleasing to your eye. Just like that. Okay, and then shades. Again, this has it's all one color and has black in them. You just bring black into those and make those more shades. Okay, now see how this whole thing can be used to create colors. Let's go over here. We'll go back to the analogous. This is the easiest one to use in most cases. I'll tend to spread this out a bit so it's about a third of the circle. And I'll then swing that around until I have some nice colors. Like there, that's pretty good in here. Interesting orange or red. Magenta, purple, and a blue. Nice, nice range of colors. They all look, they look very well together. Kind of work well together. Let's say I wanted to use this range of colors in the Photoshop Elements project. Let's just scroll down until we see this bottom section of numbers in here. And I'll go from left to right. Click on one over here, and then simply double click to select that hex number. This is a hexadecimal number. Right click and copy. Let's now switch over to Photoshop Elements. Here we go. I have this baseball card that I did last year. And let's see how we can change the colors in this using the colors from this color wheel. Okay, back to Photoshop Elements. First thing you'll need is to bring up 
your color swatches right here. There we go. These are the default swatches. It'll look like that probably. Just scroll down towards the bottom. Down here, some empty spaces down here. And this is, a, I roll over the empty space, get that little kind of paint bucket thing showing there right there. We can use that to put custom colors into this. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit as well. Grab the bottom, just stretch that out. A bit more space. And a little further. There we go. That looks better. Now I have that hexadecimal number that I copied right down here. Go back to Elements. Click on the Color Picker, bottom left hand corner. And right here is your hexadecimal number. So select that right click and paste and it pastes in that color which we just found over on the color wheel. Choose OK. That sets that color as the foreground color. Now we can come over in here and just click anywhere in the gray section with that paint bucket and choose OK. It then adds that color as a new color swatch. OK. Go back to the, the color wheel. Click on our next color. Double click right there. Right click. Copy back to elements, click on the color picker that's already selected, that's fine, so right click and paste. There's our next color, choose OK. There it is. Come over, click in the gray section, choose OK. There's our next color. OK, back over to the color wheel. Here's our next color along. Same thing, right click, copy, and back to elements, click on the color picker, right click and paste, choose OK, there we go, that's our new foreground color, back over here, OK, there's our next one, two more to go, we'll go back to the color wheel, there's that purple, double click, right click, copy, back to elements, click on the color picker, right click and paste, choose OK, there's that color, click into the gray area, choose OK, there's our next swatch, and one last one to go here. Click on the blue, double click in the hexadecimal number area, right click, copy, back to elements, click on the color picker, right click and paste, choose OK. There's your foreground color, click into the gray, choose OK, and there we go. We've now transferred those colors from the color wheel over into our color swatches. Let's go back to the color wheel again. So as you can see, it's not that difficult to find sets of colors that work well together using this color wheel and then to take those hexadecimal values and transfer those over to Photoshop elements. Once we have that, these are just regular colors. I can now go to my paint bucket tool here and let's choose the kind of bright color here, kind of a magenta color. And I'll go up here to the when it says Merge Copy, this is my light blue outline in there. I'm going to click right on that light blue outline and just fill that with that magenta. Let's now go over to the blue and this is on this merged background right here. Click into the red. That fills that color in there. We know that those work well together because we saw that on the color wheel. And then let's put this kind of an orangey thing in here in behind this yellow. And that is the shape right here. Same thing, click on that one. That fills it as a foreground color. Click in my yellow area, and there we go. So again, a new color choice in here, new color values, based upon this new set of colors which we created using the Adobe Color Wheel. Now you can find this at https forward slash forward slash, of course, color.adobe.com slash create slash color wheel. I'll also put this link into the description and I'll also put it on the video support page for this video. But again, great tool to help you find colors that go well together. If you're not really comfortable with choosing your own colors, this is a great way to go. I do this kind of stuff all the time. This tool is built into Photoshop. It's not built into Elements, but here's how you can actually use this tool inside of Elements as well. Again, the real trick is to find your colors and then come down and copy that hexadecimal value and use that to set your foreground color over here. Now, once you have your colors, if you want to save those colors, go up here to the icon right there, 
And notice here we have load, save, save for exchange, and replace swatches. Let's start off with save swatches. And then I'll give this a name. I'm just going to call this one baseball. There we go. Choose OK or choose save. We've now saved that color swatch set. Let's come down here and I'll replace the swatches. Click on replace swatches. I'll replace them with the default color swatches right there. Choose OK. Choose load. Those are, those are now gone. Let's now replace this set with that baseball set. So again, click on the little icon, come down to replace, choose your baseball right there, color swatches, choose load, and there they are back again. So we've now saved this as a special color swatch set. Now it includes, of course, all the default swatches plus our additional swatches down below. So there you go. That's how you can use the Adobe Color Wheel. There we go. Create your color selections and then use those in Photoshop Elements and then save that set for future use. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.